Well, today we have a very special guest under the spotlight, and we're excited to have Gareth Ike here. He's an activist, a singer, songwriter, an author, a former international beach soccer player. That's interesting. And he's the host of and creator of the Gareth Ike Tonight Show, an mm -hmm. uncensored current affairs show on Iconic Network. He also presents The Walk, which is a YouTube channel where he travels across the UK, walking mm -hmm. historical routes and exploring the UK's vast history. And there is a vast history there, as well as a WTAF podcast where Gareth and Richard Willett take a comical look at world events. Gareth, I believe, if we're correct, has just recently started a new show on Iconic titled The Power of People where we believe he talks with individuals who have gone through great challenges and overcomes them. He's a husband, a father of two children, and lives in Derbyshire, England, and he's obviously a very busy guy. So we're we're grateful to have you here today, Gareth. Welcome to the Spotlight. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, let's start off with, obviously, you cover current affairs mm -hmm. in in both your show on Iconic as well as your podcast, so if you had to name three of the most critical current affairs that our world is dealing with today, in your opinion, what would they be? Um, all, all of them are a complete fabrication, I would say. Um, I think climate change is huge, not because I believe in it, but because it's what is being used to drive um, changes to society. Um, I think Ukraine... Um, is is huge again not because um i believe you know russian man bad but because again i think that's being used um along with the the um conflict in the middle east to plant the seeds to explode into a world war so i think those two things um are absolutely absolutely enormous and i think the other one which is huge and ties into all of them is is freedom of speech mm. um which is you know something that people talk about all the time but it, but it's under threat constantly um you know to to put it into context i think there's around about 400 people in russian um that were um sorry were, were um convicted um of you know basically speaking words that people found offensive um i think there's about 400 um last year in russia and there was 4000 in the uk yet we're told russia is this you know horrendous dictatorship and and the uk is the the cradle of um the cradle of democracy and all this freedom and all this sort of stuff. So um, I think that's more and more under threat. Um, and if you get to a point where you can't point the finger at authority and you can't call out authority, then you're, you're in a tyranny um, as dramatic as that sounds. And I think we're getting closer to it. So they would be my, my three with, with freedom of speech probably being the biggest actually, because that takes away the ability to call out the other two. Well, I don't know yeah. what you've experienced, but uh, Bearspo and I have experienced. Uh, I I personally have had three social media accounts shut down. Um, one was during 2020, during COVID, yeah. and mm -hmm. and it wasn't that I was I was out deriding the medical uh, issues, which which I could have done, but I was being a little bit more PC. But I was talking more about exercise and and take vitamin D3, exercise regularly, eat healthfully, boost your immune system, take vitamin C, gone. Instagram shut me down against policy, you know, a community standard. So have you experienced any of that yourself? Um, well, my dad was kicked off absolutely everything. He he lost everything. For me, um, to be honest, I've, I've, I've they've gone with me more down the route of 30 day ban. And then a, another 30 day ban, which you're not actually meant to have. That's supposed to be a final strike, I think. Um, and then they go for massive um, kind of, you know, hiding your content and stuff or putting warnings on your content. Um, for instance, like, for instance, Instagram now, like I can't do an Instagram live. Like if I try and do it, because I tried to do one a little while ago, I was out on a, on a walk and I was in the middle of nowhere. And I'll be honest with you, I was lonely. So I thought it'd be funny just do an Instagram live. At least you've got some interaction with people. Um, and it wouldn't let me. And I was like, oh, what, what's that about? And it said because of your, um, was it continued community violations? Well, it sounds dead Orwellian, but whatever that means. So that's the route they've taken with me is is shadow banning and not allowing me to use features like going live and stuff like that. But for now, touch wood, you know, they've not taken my account or anything like that. Yeah. Well, I give it time. 
Jeff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. You know, <laughs> it, it takes a lot of courage, doesn't it? I mean, it really takes courage to speak the truth because people who speak the truth are persecuted at best and even prosecuted. I, I saw just today, I don't know if you've seen this, but and of course, this is in the U.S., but I'm sure you're familiar with Letitia James, uh, at least to some degree, and what's going on with Trump and, and her prosecution of him for this yeah. absolutely absurd issue of the worth of his property in in Florida. And she went to speak to a group of firemen and they booed her. And now um, they're being warned if they don't come out and admit they were booing that they're going to be hunted down because there's going to be some kind of prosecution for booing. Wow. I don't know what law that's breaking. You know, I, I mean, it goes back to freedom of speech, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't understand what law that's breaking. It's not breaking a law. No, it's not. But but at the end of the day, from what I've seen over the years um, with, with, you know, anti-hate speech laws and all these things that are, that are adopted in one country after the other, all at the same time, as if it's kind of, oh, that's a coincidence, isn't it? And not just the fact that it's, you know, someone's pressed the go button on it, is that actually if there's something that you're doing and it's not illegal, then they just change the law to make sure it is going forward. And so, you know, there's certain things that, that you might be able to say and you kind of get through a loophole maybe, well, that will go straight back to the drawing board and then write up a, a new set of rules, basically. And that's the other thing as well that I found very much throughout COVID that they, laws weren't being passed. They were rules. Mm -hmm. very different things but, but people, orders yeah yeah but people saw them as that so people would do I, I would do things and people go you can't do that it's against the law i go it's not it's it's a rule that says i need to do this it's, that there's no there's no law there's been no debate in parliament and no law has passed through parliament like all that stuff's nonsense anyway but at least they have to go through the motions of doing that and go through the house of lords and have it approved none of that so i'm like no so it doesn't count and it doesn't and so in the end here we were going on all these protests and doing all this, all these things and speeches, speeches in, 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 in places all over the country. And they, the police were turning up to arrest people and they were issuing you with these fines. And to be honest, anyone with a brain just refused to pay it. And then they would try and drag it on and try and drag it on. And in the end they went, Oh yeah, that wasn't a law. Actually that was unlawful. But the people, the poor souls that actually did pay the fines, that they didn't get the money back. Oh. You've paid it now. It's gone too late. And all, all of those people that went, I'm not paying it, that the, in the end it was like, okay, that's written off, off you go. And, you know, that they, they kind of, they prey on, on, on people not really understanding the rules and not understanding the laws and not understanding how the constitution obviously for you works and, and how, how our, our, you know, our, our laws are here and actually what they mean that the people just go, Oh, well, I listen to authority. The policeman said it when actually so many times throughout, I've seen people reciting the law back to police officers and police officers are just looking at them complete. They haven't got a clue. Right. They haven't got a clue, you know, because that's actually not part of it. You know, it's not like you have to study the law to be a police officer. You know, like if you're a barrister, you've got past the bar and all this kind of stuff. You don't have to be that to be a police officer. You just put a fa some fancy dress on and go out and arrest people because you're told to. But actually, if you recite the law back to them half the time, they'll go, okay, you can go. Because you're yeah. explaining it to them. It's extraordinary. Well, they're, they're even discussing wow. in some states here uh, allowing the illegal, illegal immigrants. Boy, that's a... That's a wired term, supposedly, I understand, uh, to become police officers and and to maybe join the military, which is incredibly frightening. It's insane. And, you know, it's insane yeah. because where's their loyalty? I, I really sincerely doubt that if we get into war and we can talk about that in a moment and your thoughts on that, because it certainly is, is being threatened. And it certainly seems that at some level we're on a precipice of, of that. And it appears to us that there are people in power who want that to happen um, yeah. because fear is the greatest control factor, you know, you know, and, and COVID was brilliant. It was heinous, but it was brilliant because it's an invisible enemy that makes your neighbor a lethal weapon. And, and so it's so divisive and mm -hmm. so frightening and, and I might die, but I'm sure you've seen too now the CDC is coming out and saying, oh, now we, we can treat COVID like the flu because it's the flu. And yeah. it's about three years too late. Um, so what what's going on? 
Gareth, in your opinion, why do you what's what's the driving force behind what's happening? Oh, and I love your three issues. I, I think we would have to agree climate change is yeah. a scam. There's there's sixteen hundred uh, brilliant scientists peer reviewed that have come out and said, hey, it's not happening. And mm -hmm. and yet they still propagate it. Um, Ukraine sure seems to me to be a money laundering operation and freedom of speech. Uh, is is pretty self evident yeah. that that those things are are three hot buttons which which you really nailed it. What what do you believe is the driving force behind what's happening in the world right now? I think ultimately control is the biggest factor. I mean, I know a lot of people think it's money, and I'm sure money does play a part in in you know the military industrial complex and in in big pharma and all that kind of stuff. But when you actually get to these big players, and, and I actually don't believe that, you know, your your Bill Gates and your Klaus Schwab's, I don't even I don't believe they're the head of the snake. I don't. I I think they're probably round about the belly, if that. I think that there'll, there'll be people above that, that that you know don't show themselves because why would you reveal yourselves if you didn't have to? Um, and so money isn't, you know, money isn't an issue for even your Bill Gates level people. I mean, the guy could, do you know what I mean? He's, he could, he could shower in the stuff like he, he didn't need any more money. So I think it's, it's obviously more than that. And I think control is the, is the biggest factor, control of society, control of the population. And nowhere is that more evident than somewhere like China. So for me, I think that's what the plan is. Ultimately, I, I don't think that it's a, a, um, a coincidence that um, you know the COVID narrative and the the protocols and the PCR test protocols came out of China. I mean, I know they went through through Germany, but they came out of China, and everything came out of there. Um, all the information that was given to world health bodies was coming from them. I don't think that's an accident. Um, and I think, to be honest, you know, to go into your 1984 George Orwell kind of narrative, I guess, I think they want a war between East and West. And that is something that I think has been brewing for a long time. And those chess pieces are being moved at the moment. You know, you've got NATO, which is, you know, basically just the West Army, you know, war machine. And, you know, Russia is being pushed closer to China Iran is being pushed closer to them as well. You've got North Korea being pushed into that. So what you're doing is you're kind of trying to exile these people through sanctions. What you're doing is just pushing them all together, um, which I don't think is an accident. And I also, I don't think that we're meant to win this war. Mm -hmm. I don't think the West is meant to win this one. I think the East is meant to win. And I think that's the new, that's the new dawn, basically. Um, very much how it is economically. I mean, you look at our, where I live, I'm, I'm on the border of Nottinghamshire, right? Which is not, it's not a huge county. It's not a small county by English standards, but it's not huge. It used to have 49 collieries, right? That was the, that was the staple kind of thing. Now it's got none. It doesn't have one. And it's all climate change nonsense because, you know, where I, I, I live now, I'm sat on top of a coal field and there's an oil field right next to us as well. And it's basically untapped. We've got all this stuff. And I talk to former miners and they're like, mate, they're like this, that coal seam goes right out into the North Sea. Like we could, we could, I think they, they conservatively estimate, I think it's about 186 billion tons of coal we're sat on here, right? Yeah. And yet we've got like the odd wind farm and the odd solar farm, which if people don't realize one, it's nighttime, at least half the day. So they're not working. <laughs> and, and also it's England. It's just drizzly and horrible for most of the time. So the solar panels are doing nothing. And yet you've got China where the, where they're opening the equivalent of two coal fired um, um, coal plants a day, a day. And it's like, you know, it, it's no a week. Sorry, a week. Yeah. Sorry, a week. Yeah. Two a week being opened in China while That's all of them better. are closed. Are closed here. A week, That's OK. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like so they can kind of they can do what they want. They don't have to hit any of these so-called climate goals or any of this nonsense. So they can just make all the money. The whole that they they have complete food security, complete energy security, and yet we're here, you know, scrapping around on the floor. America's the same. You're sat on huge oil and and, um, and coal reserves. Huge. Yeah, and the, and yet we're buying in coal from from um, Poland, and we're buying in gas from Russia, who we're told we're supposed to be at war with. It's like. <laughs> The, the, they they can just switch that off then you've, you've made yourself completely vulnerable and i don't think that's by accident and you know i don't for one i don't think biden won that election at all um not that i think 
you know, I don't think there's much of a choice between most politicians, if I'm honest. They're, I always say they're two cheeks on the same backside. It doesn't really matter which one you vote for, the government's <laughs> going to get in. Um, but with him, I think, you know, what you had with basically a, a, a senile guy um, was actually someone that would just say yes and write checks and um, balances and sign in things that he's told to. He's not going to ask any questions because he doesn't even know what, what day it is half the time. Um, so they've basically just run America into the ground which I think, again, is is intentional. Well, and he, he's, I mean, I'm sure you've seen what's going on in Congress. He's had, He has 20 shell companies. He's taken multiple millions of dollars under the table from from uh, foreign countries, including China. Uh, you, you say that Iran is being driven closer to China, and yet here's the, here's the enigma, and then again not, is that Biden is, is helping fuel iran too so it's 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 quite a conundrum and yeah. uh, let me ask you and i um do you believe that this these issues which we totally agree with you by the way and and you know a little bit about both of our stories bersaba escaped iran and and i here we go back to it again <laughs> yeah and yeah well god willing no yeah. um and i i was the the target of the government in in 2009-10 and they they bankrupted me they literally took me down um so those things shook us and woke us up a lot. Well, she woke up very early age because it was not a stretch for her to to realize that the government was not her friend. Uh, yeah. But for a lot of us, including me, that was that was a real rattling of the cage. Do you think this is new since 2020 or do you believe it goes further back than that? I think it goes way back. I'd say it goes decades back. In fact, the more now because, because a lot of well, to be fair, I didn't ever really ac accept the 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 their version of events because you know my name's Ike. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of in the DNA to to you know well, I was raised to basically question everything. Um, but but you know most most people aren't, and I understand that. You know you get on with your life and you get your paycheck and you pay your mortgage and you go out for a few beers on a Friday and everything's all right, and you don't really want to look underneath the the um, the rock because if there's spiders and creepy crawlies under there, you don't really want to see them. So you just you know that's fine. It's fine. I'm all right, Jack. And unfortunately, that's what is that's what's made a lot of Western nations, particularly because we've done pretty well, you know, in terms of our economies and our standard of living. People, most people are. I'm all right, Jack. I'm all right. Yeah, no, it's it's horrible there. What's happening in Gaza? But it's somewhere over the rainbow. You know, it's it's you know it's their problems somewhere far away. And then Russia is slightly different because you know, well, that's a little bit closer. Oh, okay, you know. But I think what, unfortunately, it takes for most people is for something to affect them. And only then do they start to look around and wake up. So, you know, they're, they're fine with people breaking into the neighbor's house, but it's when they come knocking on their door that they start to wake up and say, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so while I think, you know, COVID was obviously horrendous in terms of what they forced on people and the tyranny and what they did to world economies and, and um, people's mental health, people's livelihoods, pe people's health with these um, injectables um, and everything else. Um, while I, I think that is obviously beyond abhorrent, I also think that actually that was them coming out of the shadows because they've been, you know, people say about this, oh, you know, oh, we want to go back to the old days. I'm like, mate, the old days weren't great either. You just thought they were in comparison to this, but actually they weren't all that great either. You know, we had inequality, we had home people on the streets, granted not as many as we've got now, but you know, it wasn't a perfect world. Um, and, but people weren't affected by it so much. So they look the other way. Whereas over the last three to four years, they've started to go, Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, this can happen to me. In fact, this did happen to me. And they've started to kind of think, hang on, I, I did cover my face and I walked around a shopping center following arrows on the floor. What was I doing? Yeah. I was, you know, because people are kind of waking up now out of that coma, weren't they? That was just brought upon by just complete, you know, programming um, through the media and everything else. Um, and so I think we're actually at quite an interesting time now. To answer your question, I think it's gone on for a very long time, but I think it's just become more obvious now. It's one of those, isn't it? If if I put prison bars on your windows in your house, but I but I make sure that they're invisible, you're not going to try and escape. The minute you see that there's actually bars on the window, do you know what I mean? The 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 you you, you the baseball bats coming out or whatever the, the you know the jack to try and you know you're going to try and get out because that you're very conscious of that as soon as you can see them. 
And I think most people have lived in that invisible prison cell for, for most of their lives without really realizing it. And now all of a sudden they, they became visible because they were literally locked in their home. They were literally right. told that they couldn't go out. And if they did, they had to cover their face. Yeah. I mean, psychologically, that is, that's insane. You know, and, and, and you, you, you speak to people like Kathy O'Brien, who was a victim of the MK Ultra um, mind control program and abuse, mass abuse that was part of, of the, the CIA were behind. And she, she said, I, I spoke to her and she said, she said that was part of the ritual was covering your face. They made you as a child wear a mask because, oh, it, because it took away your identity and it took away the ident identity of those around you. There is a very psychological, there's a component to it. It's not by accident. Because it certainly wasn't about, you know, even if you believe in, you know, the deadly virus and stuff, it certainly wasn't scientific. The fact that you've got this deadly pathogen, yet some kind of blue bit of paper that was made in an Indonesian sweatshop is suddenly going to keep me safe. I mean, it's just absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> and, and I don't think most people believed it. They did it because they were told to. Yeah. And, that, and that's the scary part, isn't it? I, I mean, there was no actual government edict. It no. was... It was apparently so, but but there was no law and there was no edict. And yet the degree and the 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 quickness to which people mm -hmm. complied is is staggering. Uh, I yeah. I never wore a mask. I I just I just didn't. And I took a lot of flack. I mean, I had people screaming at me in grocery stores and and and, you know, uh, we didn't we didn't take the vaccine either. And. And we we decided, you know, God made us with a, an immune system and the immune system becomes stronger through fighting off pathogens. That, that's how it becomes stronger. And, and so um, it but it, it's difficult to do that. I mean, I didn't like getting called names uh, in the grocery store. And sometimes Beresabu would even say to me, you know, just yeah, you know, why don't you just wear it? I'm like, no, I'm not going to. You know, I'd I'd put it under my chin. And and um so anyway, it it's it's really surprising how quickly people comply. And I think, and I, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. I think the number one fear of the human species is the fear of death. I mean, it, it's pretty yeah. pretty hard to argue. And so the fact is we're all gonna die physically. Now we could talk spiritually and that's a whole different matter. You know, I, our energy never dies and that's, that's even physics, mm -hmm. but we're all physically going to die at some point. And yet it's the number one fear and we want to avoid it and we want to suppress it and we want to, don't want to look at it. And so that's, that's what was, was put upon us. And consequently people who are in fear are easy to control. hundred percent, hundred percent. But I think, do you know what was funny as well though is, when it, I don't know if it was the same in the US, but here it became quite apparent quite quickly, with the exception of a few people that were quite hysterical about it, because I think it was their it was their Dunkirk, you know, like it was their blitz, you know, like I lived through COVID. It's like, yeah, so did everyone else, mate. But they 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 kind of had that as that that was their thing. It was like going back to the fact that people have had these privileged lives. I think that's why when you look at impoverished countries you know, countries in Africa where they just got on with it. They weren't bothered and they didn't take these vaccines and they had a, a hell of a lot lower um, excess death rate because they're just used to, you know, stuff happens, man. Life is not always nice. Let's just get on with it. Whereas in, in the West, we were just kind of like, you know, I've had, I've had a, a pretty good life really. And actually now there is some status in being a victim, which I believe as mad as it sounds was started by your X factors and things like that. Like when people sing on the X Factor, it's not about the singing. It's about their sob story. It's about that they grew up and they were beaten by their parents and that or their dad died when they were young or whatever. No one ever stands up and goes, yeah, I had a great upbringing. Both parents really supportive. They're in the crowd now. Um, yeah. And this one's by Marvin Gaye. Like they, that never happened. It's all about the sob story, isn't it? So you create this place where everyone wants to be a victim and then you give them a reason and they go, yeah, I've got long COVID. You haven't, mate. You're just overweight and you're lazy. And it's a really great way to be a victim and have that moral superiority as well because you took your jabs and you wear a mask and you were saving granny when actually you were doing anything but. Um, but I'm, I'm the same as you. I didn't go along with any of it. I didn't comply with it. I'm not doing it because what I realized very quickly with – 
with it with was like i say with the exception of those that were hysterical is actually most people very quickly realized that this wasn't anything of any significance and actually it was the flu the fact that you've got one illness with a certain amount a certain number of symptoms disappears and a new illness arrives with the same symptoms and replaces it i mean that that's a sleight of hand if ever, if ever i've seen one but what i found was these people weren't worried about getting ill and they weren't worried about the police either. They weren't worried about the government. They did what they were told because they were worried about what Dave across the road or Joan at work would say about it. And that was the most extraordinary thing. It was like you have literally, you've, you've, you've basically just run yourself into the ground, lost everything essentially, locked yourself away, taken away all of your individuality because you're scared about what Dave across the road thinks. I mean, that's embarrassing. You know, and I, I'd have these conversations with people like for crying out loud, mate. It's just what a life. Yeah. Dave's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know what comes up for me? And, and I, I That's can't. That's fascinating, though. Holy I, moly. I can't yeah. quote it directly. I'm sure maybe you've heard of it, but there was a there was a study done years ago, I believe at Stanford, where they they put a guy in a room, hooked him up to some electrodes, and they put another guy in a different room. Oh. And the official person kept telling they were going to ask him questions. And if he got the question wrong or the answer wrong, he got shocked. Have you heard about this research? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I can't quote it directly, but, but the, they, they ended up pressuring these people and the guy in the other room wasn't really getting shocked, but they didn't know that. And so they dialed it up to to kill a person level and the people would comply because some authority told them this is what you have to do. And, and so it's really it's really quite staggering and it's quite frightening. And, yeah. and yet, um, what do we do about it? You know, Bearspin and I were, were speaking and I'd love to hear your opinion on this with someone the other day who said to us, well, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, what's going on in the world. Uh, and he said, there is some truth to ignorance is bliss. What, what's your take on that? I think ignorance is bliss for a very short period of time. <laughs> I, I was always taught, you know, you can bury your head in the sand, but your backside's exposed and there's only a certain amount of time until someone's going to take advantage of that. So it's a, it's a very short-sighted view for me is to, is to you know, um, and also I'm one of these people. I want to know the truth. Tell me, tell me the truth. You know, it, it, do I look nice in this outfit? Don't say yes. If it's not true, you know, I don't see the point in living a life that's not real for one. Um, because I agree with you. I agree. Like energy goes on forever, but I'm only me once I'm only me here for, well, well, till it, it's decided I'm not basically. So I don't see the point in not being true to yourself and not giving everything while you are, you know, in, in this realm, basically. Um, but I, I, I think it's a numbers game, and I've always thought that. I agree with the, the person in the sense that you can't change everyone's mind, and nor should you, to be fair, because then you just become a tyrant the other way. I, I, don't, I don't think you will um, change everyone's mind, and that's something that's quite a difficult realisation because actually, especially if you love that person, you know, especially if it's a member of your family or your friendship group that you're pleading with them to just open their eyes. I mean, there was a lot of that going on when it came to the vaccine rollout, of course. You know, but in the end, you know, I always say like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't stop it shooting itself in the head. If 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 that is what it's decided to do, then that's what it's going to do. Um, and actually, your energy therefore is better to just move ever so slightly. And there's someone stood next to them that might be more open to actually looking at the world from a different angle. And I I found that massively through COVID. Those people that I'd been aligned with in the anti-war movement. As soon as COVID came along and I saw through that straight away, because it was just because it's the same people telling me <laughs> that were telling me everything else that they were lying about. So I looked around me and I was like, right, guy, oh, everyone, oh, everyone's <laughs> gone. Like the anti-war movement just bowed, like they bowed. It was extraordinary. And there's people, you know, in this in this country, like George Galloway has just been elected, who, who, you know, was massive part of the stop the war movement here, the stop the war coalition. He was calling for Chinese style lockdowns. And it's like, what whoa whoa, what, like, how did that happen? Um, but then I've seen now more and more people kind of wake up, but they weren't in the places I was expecting. Most of the people speaking out here were footballers, 
they weren't the rock stars that fought back against the establishment. It was rock stars, um, rock stars that were bowing down to the establishment and were push, pushing the vaccine. Whereas footballers, stupid, not very bright footballers, just kick a ball around. They were the ones that were seeing through it and speaking out and saying stuff on live television. And then, like, you know, Sky Sports were desperately trying, like, whoa, 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 go, yeah, back to the studio, you know, and all that sort of desperate stuff they do when someone says something. And so what I saw was actually people wake up that you wouldn't have expected and so it's like okay well let's stop trying with you guys then you're, you're not going to wake up but these people are actually open to stuff and so more and more people now are questioning the world questioning what they're told disbelieving authority or at least questioning authority in a way they weren't before so actually whilst your, your man is right you can't change everyone i think you can you can change enough you can wake up enough people and then for me it's like a dam bursting it's it's only it's, it's only i don't think you need a majority to to change society at all i mean they say it's three percent don't they i don't know if my light's just gone out on me um i don't know if it is three percent that's a figure that people say isn't it that you need three percent of the population to start a revolution right yeah um, and I, I think you know i think we're, we're getting really close to that. I honestly do. Maybe I'm just, you know, an eternal optimist, but the way that the establishment is forcing everything through now from every angle, they're hitting us from every angle. I, th I think that's desperation because I think there's an awakening happening and I think they're terrified of it. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to get it, get everything they want through the door um, before, you know, everyone kicks it down. Basically. I think that's what I, I see anyway. I, um, you know, yeah. So, so <laughs> let, me, let me, no, I, I, I love hearing your opinion on this. Um, I, we happen to believe there are some things we, that we can do. And I'll come back to that in a few moments, but I, I just have to ask you because of your comment about every politician is, is a different cheek of the same backside, or I don't know if that's the, ex the exact quote, but, but I, it's, it's got the theme. Um, and I, I listened to you talking about the footballers and and you were a footballer and you're kind of, you know, you're kind of saying they're not they're not the the stop the war people. And, and I don't know exactly what that means. You know, you 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 kind of mime that they weren't that bright in all cases. They were just footballers. Um, and so that, that's the, the public perception of them more than my right. perception of them. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I played with some real idiot footballers, but I played with some very bright ones as well. But the public perception is that, you know, footballers, you know, idiots, whereas your artists are very bright and very intelligent, but actually they were the ones that fell for it, you know? Well, and, and, and so that it brings mm -hmm. up so many things for me, because if you look at Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, has has bit into the controlling narrative hook line and sinker with very very few exceptions yeah. and and you know there's a lot of lot of theories that that hold some weight that that they're they're encouraged and on the take to do that and that that in many cases their careers are attached to that but i gotta ask going back to the the two opposite cheeks of the same backside um it looks it looks pretty clear now that it's going to be um, Trump for sure that's running for president, and and who knows? I I don't believe I don't believe the corpse is going to make it. I I really don't. And I and 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 so um, there's a lot of people that have gravitated towards Trump that would kind of be put in the category of footballers. If you would, you know, um, they're yeah. they're the truck drivers and uh, and the farmers and the and and please, as a viewer, I I have the utmost respect for for all of those people because they're fighters, and and the artists, if you will, and the actors and the celebrities, they they're not fighters. They play like they are in movies, um, but nonetheless, um, he's he's definitely pushing against something the, and they're coming at him for some reason. And I know there's some who say, um, well, he's, he's just the other cheek of the same backside. I I'd love to hear your opinion on that because he certainly is, is going through hell for some. Um, 
I'm personally not a, not a fan of Trump. I, ne- I never was, um, even before Warp Speed, um, which I kind of, uh, which he still claims is a huge success, which I find very strange. I, I, you know why? Why? But then, the, you know, there's an ego with him, though, isn't there? Which you know, there's an ego with all these people, which I think is maybe why he won't roll back on that, because to admit you're wrong, you know, gives your ego a bit of a boot in the head in people's minds. I actually think it's actually a good thing to be able to change your opinion. Um, you know, when you're you're met with new evidence or whatever. Um, I also have a problem with him refusing to pardon Julian Assange. I, th- I think that was something that he should have done um, and would have been a huge statement if you're genuinely fighting the globalists. I kind of feel that with the election in the US, and to be fair, the election here is the same. We're, we're kind of running real parallel at the moment, both of us um, as nations, is that actually they win-win with, with this election because if Trump wins, if they allow Trump to win, then, I mean, the left will lose its mind. It will lose its mind. And those piles of bricks will be left on street corners all over again. Um, and I think you'll have a, you know, a repeat of, of the George Floyd riots and everything else that went off. I mean, people forget that they took over large, you know, areas of like Seattle and made them completely mm-hmm. lawless and stuff. There was, it was a crazy time. Um, but then on the other hand, if if Trump gets arrested or they throw him in jail or they stop him running, then you're going to have all of those people that support him will lose their minds as well. And so, you know, either way, I think there is a real potential for some kind of, you know, civil conflict in America. And I think that's probably the idea because it's a great way to drag America down even more. Um, I think these people vote for or support Trump because they see him as the lesser of two evils. I, I doubt. I doubt. I think that's probably why most people vote for most politicians. Actually, I don't think there's probably a small percentage that think Donald Trump or Rishi Sunak or Tony Blair is their friend. But most people are like, well, who else are you going to vote for? I'm not going to vote for Biden. I'm not going to vote for the Democrats because they're just basically going to force in all this gender critical, critical race theory nonsense. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be part of that in my life, which I need. You know, I agree. So actually, we're going to go you know for the lesser of the two evils but actually in the end on the big things i feel like you've got a one party state and we definitely have a one party state here you know where actually they they argue across the table for, about certain things but when you come to climate change aligned covid aligned war generally aligned and so those those three huge things they will be on the same page as everything else they can argue about and make this illusion of democracy um for me, I think, you know, the difference at the top end of the Republicans and the Democrats is the same as the difference between the Conservatives and the Labour Party here, which is the Labour Party are the Conservative Party, but with a pride flag on. That's basically it. They they badge themselves as, as this kind of more moral side when actually that's complete nonsense. They they use minorities to to get elected. They they don't support them, couldn't care less. I mean, the idea that Biden cares about transgender people like i couldn't give a can care he, don't, he probably doesn't know what one is so yeah. he, he's not bothered but that they do what they do to get votes yeah um you know and I, I think the other thing is i think a lot of people that are this like you obviously said like the artist types your hollywood types those kind of and i was around i spent a lot of time around as a musician i spent a lot of time around those people and you, you avoided talking politics with them because you, you'd want to you'd want to take a revolver to your head after a 10 minute conversation with them about it <laughs> Because because they're so moralistic, or at least they believe they are, um, that they basically their hearts on the sleeve, but the brains in the bin. And so you will have a conversation about immigration, and they will just go, "Well, everyone should be allowed in because that's the nice thing to do." And you look at them going, "Right, okay." Two words: public services. Like, where's everyone going to go? Where's everyone going to work? I don't know. Figure it out. Well, they won't figure it out. That's the the the, you know that's idiocy. Um, Whereas people on the right. I think engage their brain a little bit more with stuff like that. And they're a little bit more realistic, I think with certain things, but then there's other things that I, that, you know, you wouldn't agree with. I think, you know, if you had a combination of the two, which I think would probably be a good idea actually in in terms of a political system to have people representatives from both sides within a government so that you can actually have that perspective coming both ways. I mean, I can't see that ever happening to be honest, but it would be, I think a a decent way of, of doing it. Um, because both sides have good ideas and both sides have horrendous ideas. It's just the idea that they push those ideas on people that don't want them, Hmm. which happens a lot. Yeah. I I think the, 
the the irony i i do agree too the irony is that the people who are quote inclusive are inclusive as long as you agree with me yeah you know yeah. It's, it's the way the it's the way the anti-racists only see race right yeah, yeah. They, right. they're obsessed obsessed with it obsessed with it you know we, we've got well we've got um theater showings here now in the uk that, that are black only what yeah and so yeah, you know it's like um sorry um i think that's segregation that i just want to uh, put it out there like, yeah. and, and it's run by the anti-racist movement so so what you've got is you've got the anti-racist movement doing what the racists did in the united states in the 50s and 60s to combat racism wow. i mean you, you, you can't make it up yet the media thinks it's a great idea yeah it's a great idea Imagine turning up to watch. But the other thing is, is that surely I can go anyway because I can just identify as that and no one can say anything. That's right. so that's I'm right. still allowed in. <laughs> but, that, but that's the madness of it. And it's the same. It's the same as the, you know, the anti-sexists. They, 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 only see, they only see sex. That's literally what they see. They don't think who's the best person for the job. They go, oh, it's another white man. And so, you know, particularly in this country, it, it, to be a working class white man is like best of luck, son. They literally are the, the, the failing... They are the failing demographic, and that, that statistically, they're the failing. They are they are the most likely to fall into drug abuse. They're the most likely to be homeless. They're the most likely to be alcoholic. Um, they are the most likely to, to not go to university. Then they're the most likely to drop out of the university if they actually do get there. They're literally at the bottom of the league in every single in every single table because they've been completely neglected. Um, and in fact, just last year, or maybe what year are we now? So 2022, um, a, a wealthy guy. Was was seeing the fact that there were all these um, scholarships being started for for different communities, but not for white males, and so he put forward a, a few million pounds, as you do, um, to do a scholarship for working class white kids, and they were banned. They were banned from doing that, but they had those scholarships for every other every other demographic. Wow. And then what amuses me now is that's what you've done for a period of years, and then they've come out saying that. We're going to have to have conscription potentially to fight the Russians, and the people they want to fight and die for them are overwhelmingly the white working class males who right. all went no chance, mate. Why would I fight for you? I mean, I saw one guy come back to him just going, "Why would I fight for you? If the Russians invaded, I'd be stood on the beach to welcome them, mate." Because that's basically what you've created in this country. It's 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 mad. It is mad. Everything's inverted. I've realised that. If they tell me X, it's definitely Y. Wow. Well, and that, that's happening here too. I it's mean, third, it, yeah. it's really. I mean, Biden says that the Holy the biggest crap. threat we have is 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 white supremacy uh, in our nation is white supremacy. And, and last time I checked, he's white. So yeah. I I don't I don't I don't get it. Um, and and if you go back, I don't know if you've seen any of the old video footage of him talking about, you know, just incredibly deriding black kids coming into his children's schools and and all those kinds of things so change of heart or change of agenda you know you have to you have to decide for yourself but i that's I, it i happen to go with the latter um i do i do believe there are some practical things that individuals like you me and Bersava can do in in these turbulent times and i'd love to hear uh, what your thoughts are on some really practical things we can do to have a positive impact on these issues. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, I think as, as simple as it sounds, but pointing out the idiocy of things that are happening, mm. I think is, is, is vital. And I found that throughout COVID because my, my idea wasn't to be an activist. That was never my idea. You know, I'm just like, you know, I'll, I'll say what I think because it's how I was raised um, and, you know, but, but the idea of standing with a bullhorn on the street was never saying, I'll be honest, I ever saw myself doing, but then what was happening throughout it is so many people were messaging me, people I used to go to school with, people I play football with that were like, mate, I agree with what you're saying on your Facebook, but I can't say it because my boss is X, Y, Z, or because my mother-in-law is X, Y, Z. So actually it was like, okay, well, I work for myself. So unless I have a moment of madness and sack myself, um, I've kind of got a bit of a duty to actually then speak out for those people that kind of want to say something, but actually they're going to, you know, they, they've got more to lose. And so I think that's vital. If, if you, if you're in a position like, like, like we are fortunately where we can speak out, then you have to, I feel that I think that's a duty that if you, if you have to, you know, call a spade a spade, you have to say it as it is. And if, and if people call your names, 
well, whatever. Do you know what I mean? They'll be calling someone else names tomorrow. Um, and another thing I think which is really important, which a lot of people don't do, is actually live the life that you're promoting. I see it all the time. Where, where people talk about doing this and talk about doing that and they, they don't do that themselves they don't live that way so they preach it you yeah. see it on a lot of these kind of you youtube you know wellness and, and lifestyle coach types and they don't do, do burger king an hour later like it's, <laughs> it's everyone's like projecting this idea of themselves and it, it you know it comes from social media for me where you take a picture on instagram and, and wow, don't you look great in that picture? It's like, yeah, it was the 40th attempt. Like no one ever actually was, you know, with like 100 filters on it or whatever. Everyone's living this fake life. So I think that's vital as well is to. And, is and to, then you apply a bunch of filters to it. To make it said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. And, but that's what I think is important that, that is, to, is to be sincere in, in, in what you're saying in the way that you're living. Be authentic. And if you if you can just improve yourself by doing that, then you you know you improve the lives of people around you. They do the same. All of a sudden, you've got this this effect on society that most people don't think they can have because it's just little old me. I'm in a house in Derbyshire. What can I do? I can't do anything. I'm not a politician. Well, actually, of course you can because you do things that affect the neighbours. They do things that affect their neighbours and their friends and their aunties and uncles. And and in no time, actually, the world is a better place because of just a few simple changes that you can make to your life. Yeah. Um, the most important one for me, which is probably the most difficult is to not be reliant mm. on anything, whether it be for your, for your food, for your water, for your electricity, for everything. And that's the real hard one. And that's the real oh, tough one. It's tough. real tough. And, and you know, people are doing it, but it's people that own land. And most people don't own land because land costs an awful lot of money. Um, but I think in the end, that's that's the way we're going to go. Um, is that actually we're going to be more self-sustainable um, to fight back against the climate change agenda, which is kind of ironic, really. But I think that's you know how it's going to be. Um, and so I think that's vital as well is to is to learn a trade and not be reliant. You know, learn how to do stuff. You know, even if it is again as simple as it sounds, even if it's a YouTube video, learning how to grow food or do something practical so that further down the line you have something going for you that you can barter with because i also think that the the, the financial system is going to collapse i think it's meant to collapse and it's totally done on purpose just to lead to chaos but if you can offer something in a barter system which is hilarious because i don't know what these youtube influencers and instagram influencers are, are gonna do i guess come around and sit in the garden and pose for you i, I don't know for favors but <laughs> it's kind of hard to monetize that though it kind of, yeah exactly but but i think that's what will happen you know th oh. this this guy grows potatoes you know this 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 guy's um a hairdresser this guy's a, a personal trainer this guy is 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 you know a doctor or or at least you know holistic practitioner or whatever you know okay well i'll i'll, I'll sort out your your you know i'm a chiropractor I'll, I'll put your spine back for a bag of potatoes and actually it might well come to that and where you completely step away from from the establishment so you don't need their permission for anything um i'm sure they'll try and crack down on that but i think that's something that's important as well is to actually bring something to the table yeah that's a I, tough one it the the, the, the become self-reliant yeah, yeah. is, is really a difficult one we've talked about it and and it's it's challenging because we yeah. we don't own a whole lot of land either and right. and so um we support you know, our local farmers we uh, we go to our farmers market yeah we get we get all of our our meats you know mm -hmm. from our local farmer and and it's all grass fed and grass finished and and it's all healthy and 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 we do all those things and one other thing that we've we've done that i think all of us can do and i'm talking to the viewer as well today is is we decided to stop supporting businesses oh, that we yeah. disagree with their ideology. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we, we got rid of all of our Nike workout gear. Um, you know, we, we used to have, have a lot of it and, and we just got rid of it. And, and we stopped, we stopped with Disney and we stopped, you know, with, with a myriad of things that we didn't agree with their ideology. And I think that's, that's one way that I see, and and we can see this collectively. It it has an impact where it hurts them on yeah. on their profit and loss statement, and that's where we have a tremendous amount of power. They need us; we don't need them. Exactly that, and just and just look at blood uh, Bud Light. 
I nearly yeah. got blood yeah. like them, but it was a fraudulent slip. But then it's the same here with Costa Coffee. Costa Coffee did it here where they, they put this ad campaign out and it was like this cartoon, but it was a girl with, who, who just had Bermuda shorts on and with mastectomy scars because, you know, they transitioned and it's a kid. And that, that was an ad campaign. And so, you know, people went, not no chance. I mean, wow. you know, I, it is quite overpriced, but I would occasionally have a, a Costa. If you go into a service station, they're nearly all Costa or Starbucks. And I'd been boycotting them for the best part of 20 years. So I was like, um, you know, oh, you know, well, that's fine. I just, I won't have a coffee. I can live without a coffee. That's fine. I'll just make one when I get home. And yeah. so you're right completely. You make those decisions. It affected them massively in the pocket and they came out and they apologized for it. You know, it won't happen again. I'm sure it will, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's important. Absolutely. You, you decide where your pounds and dollars go, mm-hmm. you know, you know, that's it. And, and the other thing actually, to be fair, and I should have said this as well as the self-sufficient thing, because I think being self-sufficient unless you own farmland is, is impossible. Probably you can strive to get as close to it as you possibly can. But especially if you have a family, it's probably different if you're just feeding yourself, but if you've got a family, it's hard, but that's where finding your tribe comes in. That, that happened massively in COVID here. People found their tribe because they were lonely. They might be the only person at work or the only person in a friendship group or the only person, even in a family that saw through it. And so they're like, right, this is hella lonely. So they would come to protest. They'd meet people in their local area that were also at the protest. Suddenly they've got a group. Um, they, they were called Stand in the Park. They had started this group here in the UK. And it, oh, goodness knows how many lives it saved, countless, um, just by giving people um, some social interaction and, and getting them out of the house where they were just sat on their own. And, and so that's where you make friends with the local farmers. That's where you, you know, and so they can support your group with that. And then you bring something else to the table, like I say, with this bartering thing. So actually you don't have to be self-sufficient um, as, as you know, an individual, it's kind of, well, I'm self-sufficient, but there's 20 of us yeah, and we're just within this community that is doable. Then I think that would, you know, that, that changes things that. Yeah. And, and where does, mm-hmm. where does that land us who are, who are peddling for lack of a better word or, or propagating information in, in, you know, you talk about the Instagram models and, and, and so on and so on. Where does that put us, much like yourself and, and Bersma and I, who are putting out information long term, in your opinion? Well, I, I think I think knowledge is always needed and things are always evolving. I mean, to be honest, I, I would love nothing more than to not have to put out information about corrupt governments and, and anti-human cult-like behavior. I, I would much rather it all just ended and I could go and live near some old country railway station and watch trains go by. That would do me. But that's <laughs> not happening for a long period of time. And so I think, you know, no matter what, people within government or people within authority or whatever will always need someone to keep them in check. And I think, and that used to be what journalists did a uh, hundred thousand years ago it seems now but time. it used to be that's the that's the job of, of, a, of a journalist is to get to the bottom of what's happening and then what happened is journalism became partisan and so you go oh that's 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 a left-wing magazine or that's a right-wing magazine i don't care what wing it is just tell me what happened i don't need your slant on it you know so i think that there will always be a place for people that are you know spreading information and calling out um authority and and explaining the way that the world is i think that's important and if you have to do that you know with having slagged off solar power with a, a little uh solar thing in your garden to to you know power your setup so that you can podcast and if the internet goes down and all that kind of stuff like i'm i'm sure it will but the, the internet's not been around for that long you know think how many revolutions happened before the internet you know I think pretty much every single one, because I don't believe the color revolutions across the Middle East were anything more than complete scams anyway. So any legitimate revolution was happening. You know, the suffragettes weren't weren't going on podcasts. So I think, you know, we'll, we'll just have to go out to village halls and get the bullhorn back out again. And, um, and you know, Get on, get, on, get on the horses and ride and, and yell. <laughs> yell. Exactly. That, that's what it is. You know, the, 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 the People, people always know the truth when they hear it, I think, deep down. It resonates completely differently. And so I think there's always a place for someone who's willing to say it, no matter how uncomfortable it is, because, you know, they might shout at you and slag you off because you might be telling them things they don't want to hear, but deep down they know when they hear the truth. And I think that is, that's what, what is vital for everyone to keep doing, no matter what, 
they throw at you. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, I, I always use the analogy of, of if, if you found out your, your friend's wife or friend's husband was having an affair and you go and tell them, look, I was out last night and I saw, yeah, with another woman, you know, blah, blah. they're not going to thank you for that. No. They're not going to go, oh, cheers for that. Thanks for that. They're going to have a go at you. They're going to attack you. They're going to say, ah, oh, you've always been jealous of our relationship and they will try and turn it on you. And, and that's what society is doing a bit with people like us because they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important they hear it. And deep down, you know, they know it's true. And after a while, that friend will come back to you and go, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry I reacted in that way. You were right. They, they were having an affair and you make up and carry on. And I think that's kind of what will happen with society and people like us is in the end we'll 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 have a handshake and get on yeah we'll, we'll be part of the same community <laughs> um i gotta ask you this question i i didn't plan on it but it's coming up for me um we've heard your dad's opinion and and he makes a lot of sense he always does and and do you believe you personally i much rather i want to hear your opinion today do you believe that you can be part of the billionaire club and be on the side of goodness and God and righteousness in today's world? Short of making it by being an incredible sports person. Um, and even then to become a billionaire, you would have to sign endorsements with some horrendous sweatshop running companies um, and look the other way in terms of morality on that. So I would probably say no. I don't think so. I don't, I'm not one of those people that has a problem with rich people. You know, you'll find a lot of people, you know, mainly socialist types or, or at least, you know, self-prescribed socialists that have a problem with rich people, like, you know, rich people bad. I don't have a problem with rich people at all. I know plenty of rich people. Um, they're nice enough. They're all miserable. I'll say that for them. They're all miserable, every single one of them. But I don't have a problem with rich people. But when you get to the levels of billionaires, uh, I, I don't see how you can possibly acquire that amount of money without stepping on someone's face. And also if you've still got that amount of money and there's people around you that are homeless and starving and whatever, then again, that jigsaw doesn't fit for me. So no, not, not, a, I don't think so. I'm, I'm happy to be proved wrong though. I'm happy for a billionaire to come out and save everything, but I, I, no, not a I, huge fan. I, I'd be I'd be elated to be proved be proved that that, that can happen too. Um, so <laughs> X seems to be a breath of fresh air. Is it is it a breath of fresh air? Is it for real or is it a ruse? I, I, I to be honest, I think I don't believe that it's free speech. I know a lot of people that are still banned on there. People like Max Egan and stuff are still banned from there for things that they said um, about the Middle East conflicts and things like that. So again. If there's free speech for me and not free speech for thee, it's not free speech. It's for everyone or it doesn't exist. Otherwise, it's just freedom to conform to whatever parameters are set in front of you. Um, I don't I don't trust Musk because I look at what people do rather than what they say. And so he is this, you know, now leader of the freedom movement, um, a freedom movement which is mainly awake to the issues of AI. It's awake to 5G and 6G. And this kind of stuff. And here you've got a guy that's firing tens of thousands of satellites into the sky to beam 5G onto the planet and, you know, is putting chips in people's brains. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't see how those two things marry up. You've also got, you know, the climate change agenda where they're trying to force everything um, towards electric cars, which in the end will become driverless cars, which means you can go where the car computer tells you you can go and you can't go anywhere else. And he's, you know the owner, at least in 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 name, um, of the biggest electric car company on the planet. Again, these things don't marry up. And the other thing is I don't see how he runs all of those businesses and spends as much time on Twitter as he does. It's true. So I'm questioning. And the other thing, which is the biggest red flag for me, was that if you are a freedom of speech advocate and you're genuine and you want to buy the biggest social network on the planet, they will not let you do that. But with Elon Musk, not only did they let him do it, through BlackRock and um, Morgan Stanley, they, they helped fund it. And then they even tried to sue him when they thought he was backing out. So they literally guaranteed that he took control of it. Now, 
you know, if me and you and my dad and a few others um, that, that are genuinely in this for the for for genuine reasons and for the long haul had managed to get some money together to buy Twitter, there's no way they'd be selling it to us. Not a chance. Yeah, yeah I, they threatened would, to sue him if he didn't buy it. I, well, I knew <laughs> that he he got threatened to be sued. I, I wasn't aware until this very moment that BlackRock was involved, and that yeah, that yeah, said, that says a lot right there. There's there's a lot of investment um, firms. Morgan Stanley being being one of them. I think um, was it Morgan Stanley? No, J.P. Morgan. Sorry, um, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, BlackRock's in there as well. So there's you know there's there's a lot of quite interesting information out there on on him, which which you know gets deleted from various platforms, as you can imagine. But you can still find it every now and then. Um, but I I I don't trust him. But again, I'm one of those people. You know, I'm, I would love to be proved wrong. In fact, I want to be wrong about all of this. I want to actually be a complete tinfoil hat weirdo, and actually the world's great. <laughs> that's the that's the best because that means my kids are actually in in a decent world, and I just got hey. it wrong. That's what I would rather. But, yeah, um, right. <laughs> well, I, I got to tell you, uh, Bersaba did did put on a tinfoil hat when she was a little kid. I, that's a whole nother story. Um, you know, or maybe it did work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here she is. Uh, maybe there's something to that. I never uh, did. So how how you, this has been brilliant and want to be respectful yes. of your time. Mm -hmm. um, how do our viewers find your work? Um, so iconic.com is probably the best place for it um, in terms of the, the weekly show, which obviously I was, you know, privileged to have you both on there um, and for, you know, some of the comedy stuff. Cause again, I think that's important. So the WhatsApp podcast, what I found early doors when you're dealing with bullies is there's nothing a bully hates more than being laughed at. Yeah. So laugh at these people because actually, you know, these all powerful people are actually just a bit of an embarrassment really. So I think it's funny to point and laugh at them. Um, and then the other stuff is is the walk, which is on YouTube, um, which just started off. Basically, um, it's just at Ike Walks on YouTube. It started off as basically just I like walking. You know, I've had a hell of a lot of leg injuries over the years. And so I don't you know, I don't take for granted now my ability to walk 30 miles. I'm literally like, this is a privilege. But I do this now. Um, and then I just started finding that there's so much of our history that's completely erased or very nearly erased. And so you can find some unbelievable things just hiding away in different parts of the UK that I've managed to, you know, stumble upon and find, um, you know, things from the 16th, 17th century that people didn't even know were there um, and, until I, you know, kicked away some mud and uncovered stuff. So it's it's uh, it's amazing. And it's it's kind of not meant to be related to any of this stuff that we're doing. But at the same time, it is because actually I think our history being eradicated isn't an accident. And so, you know, if I can kick over some turf and uncover stuff, then I'm going to keep doing that. Um, so they're all different things, but that's where people can find me. And I'm also on Twitter for now. I always say for now, you know, because it's only one, it's only one word wrong in it and I'm out. Yeah. And and this may be the one you just talked about the owner, that yeah. quote owner. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we're, and we're, we're corroborating. So who knows, but okay. that's it. We'll, we'll be in the gulag together, all three of us. <laughs> And we won't be shocking people just because they tell us to do it. It's the right thing to do. Hey, God bless you, man. And yeah. and again, thank you so much for your time and your energy mm -hmm. and your wisdom. And uh, we'll look forward to staying in touch. Oh, and definitely. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah.